morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Second Congregational Church here in West Stafford. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. Uh, if you haven't heard yet, Jan's mother did pass away on Friday. So we'll be having, having a service for her in Providence on Tuesday that I have the, the honor of performing. So this is going to be a very strange week for me. Uh, so I won't be in the office on Tuesday, probably will not be in the office on Wednesday. But you'll be able to uh, get me by telephone or email. I'll be working at my office at home and I'll get the bulletin to you. Can it may not be on Tuesday, but uh, you get it before uh, before you need it. And of course, I'll get you something for uh, both of the uh, just in time and newsletter. So again, thank you for coming. We're gonna have to turn the heat on pretty soon, but I got I'm lucky. I got my robe on, so I'm uh, feeling pretty warm. And all of you who have joined me in the call to worship that's put in the bulletin, sing along with gladness. God, God is gathering, gathering the people. From the furthest parts of the earth we come. All who struggle, all who labor with new life. Those who are weeping, God will console. Those, Those who get lost, lost find a clear path home. Let us worship the God who gathers us. And now our opening hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tons to Sing, number 223 in the Pilgrim Hymn. <laughs> Jeremiah. 
This poem opens with a string of commands. Sing aloud with gladness. Raise loud shouts. Proclaim praise and say the, the tone is marked with the urgency of joy. This should give us pause. The book of Jeremiah is one of the most devastating, despondent, and depressing books in the Bible. The reader is far more likely to encounter woe in Jeremiah than joy. This text, however, comes in a slim little collection, sometimes referred to as the Book of Consolations. So let's listen now as Don reads from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Sure, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel, for I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the furthest points of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. Together in a great company, they shall return here. Well, weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by the brooks of water in a straight path, which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and to Ephraim and is my firstborn. Thank you, Don. Getting to be that time of year. <laughs> the gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. The healing of the blind man in Jericho emphasizes the point that Mark has made throughout his gospel. Faith in Jesus not only gives the man back his sight, but a spiritual healing enabling the man to follow Jesus on the way. It could mean the way to Jerusalem and the cross. Or it could also be interpreted as in later years the way of discipleship. In Acts, the early church was described as the followers of the way. Since this was the last episode in Mark's narrative before he began telling of the death of Jesus, we can presume that both meanings were fully intended. So let us hear these words now from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples in a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Barnabas, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Here ends this morning's reading of God's holy word. We thank you, O oh God, for your willingness to share your wisdom with us. Grant us this wisdom and understanding the reading and the hearing of these holy words. Please be with me in prayer. O oh God, light of the minds that know you, life of the souls that love you, and strength of the thoughts that seek you, bless the words of my lips 
and the meditations of our hearts. Breathe into us that we may live in the manner that you will for us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever felt that your life has come to a standstill? As if you've been relegated to the side of the road as the rest of the world passes by. Did you think it would take a miracle to get your life back? Oh, well, so did Bartimaeus. But one day he took a chance and all his dreams came true. The same can happen to you. So let's continue his story. It was another beautiful day in Jericho. The sun was shining. The palm trees were blowing in the breeze. The sea air tantalized the nose. And Herod's resort city was bustling with the noise of pilgrims on the way to Jerusalem for Passover. It was a good day to be alive. Well, unless you were one of the countless beggars that lined the road that led out of the city. Then this day was just like the countless others that seemed to stretch on and on to the horizon. If you were lucky, they might garner a few coins from the travelers en route to the grand feast. More than likely, though, they would be overlooked left to sit as the rest of the world passed by, reduced to a few crumbs and a shoddy blanket under the hot sun. It was doubly worse for Bartimaeus. Not only was he destitute, he was blind. He had been since birth. And when his parents had died, he was forced to beg along the Jericho Road. He couldn't even enjoy the bright sun or the waving palm trees. His world extended only as far as his hands could reach, as far as his ears could hear. So while others excitedly rushed on to Jerusalem for the big celebration, Bartimaeus sat. If he had any hopes or dreams, he kept them deep inside. Not that anyone would listen to a blind old beggar. Anyway. Ever felt that way? Perhaps not materially poor, but spiritually poor. Your hopes and dreams shelved away in some deep recess of your soul. Perhaps you wanted to share them, but someone cut you off or sold you short. Now your eyes have grown dim and your vision for better days has darkened. So you sit as others march by, busy with lives that you can only imagine. But today, today there's big doings in Jericho. The town is a buzz. It seems yesterday the prophet from Nazareth, on his way to the Passover feast, came and invited himself to a dinner party with the local tax man, Zacchaeus. And now the little man had become a big man in the eyes of God. And rumor has it, that Jesus and his men were marching on Jerusalem to usher in the kingdom. And even now the crowds were gathering to make this a victory parade. The news spreads out to the beggars at the city gates. Did you hear? Did you hear? Jesus is coming. The atmosphere is charged with excitement. Perhaps there will be a few more coins today. Perhaps this Jesus will open his coffers and spread a little gold and silver around to the less fortunate in his coming kingdom. Bartimaeus sits and ponders this news. 
Jesus. Jesus. Where has he heard that name before? Oh wait, that's it. He heard it in the exciting conversations of travelers coming from Galilee. Is this the man who for people say can heal the sick? Make the lame to walk, the dumb to talk, the blind to see. Slowly the cold embers of the dead dream begin to warm up. A small spark flashes across the soul of this man. Oh, see again. To get up from his dusty roadside and walk into a life like other men do. To see the face of a wife or a child. To see a sunset, a wildflower, a myriad of colors and shapes and sizes. To see. Could it be? Faith begins with just such a question. And now the parade has reached the city gates. The crowd noisily pushes forward to catch a glimpse of this man Jesus. He's trying to teach above the roar of the crowd, but it seems a lost cause. They go forward carried by the overwhelming flood of enthusiasm. And above all this tumult, a voice cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Some turn to look and see this silly old man on his knees. Son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up, old man. Can't you see that Jesus has no time for a blind beggar like you? But he isn't silenced. Now is his one chance, and he must see it through. Son of David, please have mercy on me. Have you ever cried out to the Lord? Have you ever wanted something so badly that you would risk ridicule and rebuke? Have you had a dream so powerful that not even the world itself could stop you from calling out? Now, if you haven't, then you aren't quite ready for what happens next. For only those who are willing to perceive in the face of obstacles can make their voices be heard above the din of the world. Only one willing to expend the end of their resources will ever find renewed strength. If faith begins with a question, it grows with a cry for mercy. Now what happens next is one of the most powerful events in all of Scripture. Jesus stops. He's just hours away from the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Days away from the upper room and the Last Supper. A week away from the shameful and painful death on the cross. But Jesus stops. In the midst of a hurricane of human voices, one voice in this huge crowd, one voice arrests him. Above all the cheering, he hears one voice solitary man crying out. And the parade comes to a halt. Call him. Now, ponder this just for a moment. Jesus stopped facing what will be the most traumatic days of his life. Days in which the fate of the entire world hangs in the balance. But Jesus is willing to let destiny stand still for just 
just a minute so he can attend to the needs of one person. You know, he still lets the world wait today when we call upon him. The Son of God is willing to stop to hear you when you pray. He knows your questions. He hears your cry for mercy. And now he's willing to put other things on hold just for you. Amid the hustle and bustle of life, can you hear the voices of angels? Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. And this is the call of faith. It's the moment of truth for Bartimaeus. And he makes a tremendous leap of faith. Casting off the cloak, which is the only world he has ever known for so many years, he leaves the side of the road and enters life again. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus had asked that question. And he asks it again. When James and John had asked to be seated at his right and left hand in heaven, if you remember last week, he refused. They had asked for glory. Bartimaeus asked for grace. Rabbi, I want to see. What a model of true faith. Here's a man willing to step out from the world he has known all his life. Willing to cast off the past and reach out for a bold but uncertain future. Willing to put his trust in the words of one who claims to be the Son of God. Yet this is the kind of faith that breaks through the darkness, grabs hold of the light. This is the one who will see Jesus. So I have to ask, are you ready to leave the roadside? Are you ready to give up the comfortable cocoon of the life that you've been living? Can you cast aside the self-righteousness, the pride, and the shackles of sin? If so, be ready to answer him when he asks, what do you want me to do for you? Rabbi, I want to see you. Scarcely have the words left his lips when unbearable light pours into his darkened eyes. Bartimaeus squints and opens again to a world of wash and color. He sees first the smiling face of the one who has brought a dead dream to life. Go. Your faith has healed you. Go. Go? No, I want to follow. Follow you wherever you might lead. And with that, Bartimaeus left the side of the road for good and began again the journey of life with Christ as he died. This is the story of Bartimaeus. But really, it could be the story of any one of us. For all of us have blind spots in our lives. Each of us, at one time or another, has found ourselves stalled along the road of life. Sin has reduced us all to being beggars outside the city gates of heaven. But there is good news. Jesus is still passing by. He's still walking the highways and the byways in life, looking for those whom life has passed by. His ears are open to our cries for mercy. 
He's still willing to stop for those who seek His grace. When He calls, will you have your priorities straight? Will you be able to answer when He asks, what can I do for you? Lord, I want to see you. And when he has healed your blindness, are you ready to follow him down to the road of discipleship? Bartimaeus, when given his chance, took a deep leap of faith into the Savior's arms and into a new life. Today is the day to ponder the question, am I laying by the side of the road? Or am I weak? Amen. Our hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful. The 31 of the New Century. Pray for the whole church of Jesus Christ. 
that begun, maintained, and promoted by the Holy Spirit, it may be true, engaging, glad, and active, doing your will. Let your church be always faithful and ready to promote the cause of compassionate love and peace. We pray for the United Church of Christ, for all of our congregations, our associations and conferences, and the General Synod in Cleveland. We pray especially for your church here in West Stafford. We pray that as Christian disciples, we may be a faithful witness in word and deed to the good news of Christ's love. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray that everywhere upon this earth there may be justice and peace. We pray especially today for the well-being of people in parts of the world affected by drought and famine. And we continue to pray for peace in the Persian Gulf and in all the conflicted areas in Africa. Lord, we pray for all people in their daily life and work, for our family, our friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We name before you individuals and families experiencing personal hardships or facing uncertain futures. Those who are separated from loved ones, those who are grieving this day, and those who are sick in hospital or ill at home. Hear our prayers, both spoken and the silent. May our prayers further your purposes for us all and bring us to that place where we may experience the joy that has been given to your, fam your faithful down through the ages. A joy that is everlasting. Amen. Our ancestors in faith show us the way to share the gifts God has given us with the whole community. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God with heartfelt gratitude, commitment, and praise. The morning offering will now be received. <laughs>
Transform our lives, O oh God, and let these gifts change the world to which we send them. Take them and multiply them to be a blessing to justice and peace in the world you love. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I love to tell the story, number 317. Amen.